Here's why the boys are always by the wood pile. Chipmunk. <laughs> You're a brave little chipmunk. He's a brave little chipmunk out there by the wood. He's probably already hiding. Yep, he already went in the wood. You smell him, Milo? You smell him? <laughs> you were too late. Okay, I thought I'd talk to you guys while I get some chicken in my crock pot. Um, I went through my shredded chicken that I had in my freezer, um, using it to entice Mozzie to eat after his uh, surgery. Um, I don't remember it um, affecting his appetite as much when he's been under anesthesia before, but um, this time it, it could have been the um, pain meds he was on because he was on a new type of pain med. He was on gabapentin and he was on an um, injection we had to give him. My husband would give him the injection so I was a little leery to do it. It was the same one we had to give Grant uh, when Grant had his uh, gallbladder out. I can't remember what it's called. I'll type it on the screen here. Um, I don't know if that was affecting his appetite. I I'm not sure. So anyways, went through a bunch of shredded chicken I had in the freezer because of course the other dogs had to have some too, you know, <laughs> on their dinner. <laughs> so we got to replenish that because it's always good to have some shredded chicken in the freezer in case your dog's sick. So I'm just going to trim. It always says boneless, skinless, but there's always still some skin and there's some pieces on there I don't want on there. So I'm going to trim that off. And I'm going to throw it in my crock pot here. And as you can see, it's a pretty vintage crock pot. <laughs> um, the new crock pot nowadays cook way too hot. And I know it probably has to do with food standards or something, but they boil on low. Um, so I saw that some people were going to thrift stores and getting older crock pots before uh, they started making them cook in a higher heat. So I found this one, which I think is from the 80s, um, and it works perfect. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And it cost me, I think, eight bucks. <laughs> so, if you're like me, and you don't like that the new crock pots cook so warm, or hot, I should say, because crock pots shouldn't boil on low. Um, my food was, it just wasn't the same with these new crock pots. Anyway, check out a thrift store. See if you can find an older crock pot. And I think you'll love it. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, as I was saying, Mozzie was having some issue uh, with his appetite. So, I was giving him some shredded chicken. And I got some lean, very lean ground beef. Um, and was giving him that. I finally have him eating just dog food now. Um... But what's funny is he won't eat the Hills Prescription Diet low-fat uh, 
that he was eating. He won't eat that now. He turns his nose up to it. He'll only eat the food that my, or, uh, Grant eats. The Royal Canin gastrointestinal low fat. Which is fine because it's, it's low fat and it's pretty much the same thing as the Hills Prescription Diet low fat. Um, I just think it has maybe more probiotics in it for the gut. Not sure. Um, so it's fine if he wants to eat that. That's totally fine. The only reason I was keeping... I was doing that separate for Grant because Grant seems to like the Royal Canaan better. Because um, some people were asking why I feed him different than the other boys. Grant seems to like that one better. And um, like I was saying in another video, I've been having to soak his food um, to soften it. And that food softens way faster than the um, Hills Prescription Diet. So that's why I was... Um, keeping Grant on that. But now Mizey wants to eat it. That's all he'll eat. He turns his nose up at the other. I don't know why. <laughs> He's become so picky in his old age. Yes, he has. He's so picky. And this morning, and I was having a terrible time getting him to take his pills, would not take it with the canned food anymore. Um, so I was having to use my pill pusher, pill popper, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I hate doing that. I hate it. I feel so bad having to do that. But, um, you know what I should use? Kitchen shears. It'd probably be way easier. But I want, I don't want to dirty something else. Um, so yeah, so he wouldn't take his pills with the canned food. Tried it with cheese, wouldn't take it. But guess what this morning? He took it with cheese. <laughs> I've been trying them every day. And if he doesn't take it with whatever I smother it in, I just get the pills out and use the pill pusher. But he took them with cheese today. I'm so happy. Um, yeah. But he's doing good. Um, he's pretty much back to his normal self now. So that was on Monday he had that procedure. Today's Friday. Um, it took it took about 48 hours uh, for him to um, kind of get back to normal. So, and they said it could take 24 to 48 hours. So, but he's doing really good. Have not heard about the biopsy yet. Um, so, she said she would text me today because she does not work on Fridays. But she said if she um, got the results, she would text me. Um, I'm assuming it's probably going to be Monday. But if she does text me um, before I, oops, I almost put the skin in there. Um. Before I get this video up, I'll let you, I'll jump on and let you guys know uh, what she says. But I, I have a feeling it's going to be Monday or Tuesday. So, but um, if you remember in my last video, uh, they sent him home early because of his anxiety and stuff. When he got home, he was just great. He, he just laid around and he was fighting the anesthesia. He didn't want to go to sleep. <laughs> He ended up sleeping through the night, which was wonderful. Uh, I did have to wake him up at four and we had to give him an injection of pain pills. Um, but he went right back to bed after he went outside. So um, he did really good. I was I was really nervous about him coming home um, since I usually keep him overnight, but he did great. Um, text Dr. Pearson to let her know how he did. And, um, so he was having uh, diarrhea though. And he, after he would go, he would go around the yard and he'd be like straining to go. I know this is TMI, but he'd be straining to go. So I did let her know that. And she told me to give him, she wondered if he had any more of the uh, medication she had given him before. Uh, the my, my, metronizadol. I'll type it here on the screen. Um, and he still had some left. She, he had 14 days left, so... She told him to me to give that to him for five days and then let her know how he's doing. And ever since I've been giving him that, he's been doing great. So today I have to give it to him. It'll be day four. So tomorrow he'll have to take it and then he'll be off that. So that helped that out. She thought it might be stress colitis. Um, I think that's what it's called. Um, so the medication helped. He's been having no problems since. So that's good. But yeah, he, he's been doing really good, except for his pickiness. <laughs> his pickiness, but 
we'll do whatever he, he's eating his food down now um i haven't been having to put any um type of meat or anything on it to try to get him to eat so i just want to get this chicken made up just so i have extra and of course i use it to use the shredded chicken for if i need it for recipes too but i thought i'd get two packages and cook it up shred it up and package it in little bags um to have in the freezer in case you never know when another issue is going to come up with seven dogs so it's just good to have on hand but you can give them lean, very lean ground beef. Uh, you can give them um, very lean ground turkey um, if you have a dog that needs to be uh, low fat. Hold on, I gotta let uh, Magnum out. Okay, you're gonna go out too? Are you gonna go out, Marley? No? <laughs> Marley said, no, I smell chicken. I'm staying right here. <laughs> He's staying right by my feet. It's not even cooked yet, Marley. So yeah, so that's the update on Mozzie. Grant is still doing good. He's had no diarrhea issues since, uh, I don't even remember when that was now. My days just kind of, was that last week too or was it the week before? Or No, it was last week. It was last week um, when he was having his issues. He took his medication and he's been doing good ever since. Um, no problems with him. So, Miggy's toe's still doing good. He is not, I never had to put the cone back on him. Um, after he got his last checkup at the vet, um, when she said everything was going good, she said only put the cone on him if he continues to lick it. And he, he just licked it a couple times and then he was fine and he's been good. So, um, Miggy's been doing good. Ooh, this piece of chicken's kind of, ugh. We'll cut that off. All right. Um, I'm going to get off for now. I wanted to show you guys the um, stuff I've been kind of gathering. I had asked on, I keep wanting to put the nasty stuff in the crock pot. <laughs> um, I asked you guys that on my Facebook page. Um, if you guys keep any products on hand at home or any anything at, for emergency situations, if your dogs, if something happens, like, like Miggy with his broken toenail. Is there certain things you guys keep on hand um, at home in case say something arises during on a weekend when your vet is not um, open? So I wanted to show you guys some things I um, have purchased and what I keep on hand. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, if it's a real emergency, you need to go to the emergency vet. But there's some things I've got and um, have made little bags for for the dogs. In case of emergency so i was going to share that with you guys so let me finish this all up i'm going to add some water to that turn it on low let it cook all day um and then shred it up later tonight so let me clean up and then i'll share with you my little emergency kit okay before i go everything on the kitchen counter here i uh, wanted to say thank you to paul um, if you hear something squeaking it's one of the toys that Paul sent the boys. He sent a package to the boys and to the kitties. We appreciate it so, so much. I wanted to just let you know we got it and thank you. Um, okay, so in these cute little, I think these are made by Mark Tetro. I have a couple different bags. I have a backpack, I have a purse that um, people have sent me throughout the years and I love them. And I decided to use these ones here as my little medical kits. <laughs> um, so, um, if you're on our channels or on Facebook page, uh, a couple weeks ago, I had wrote a post uh, wondering what you guys keep on hand at home uh, for your pets in case of emergency. Um, so, I just wanted to share kind of things I've gathered um, to have in the house for on weekends or whenever the vet is closed to hopefully maybe be able to hold them over till the vet opens. Um, like I said, if it's an emergency, a bad emergency situation, go to a 24 hour uh, emergency vet hospital. I do have a list on, that my vet printed out for me, a list of local emergency 24 hour care vet hospitals that I also keep on hand. Those are in a drawer over 
in my buffet where I keep all that stuff. So I do have that too. And it has the addresses and phone numbers on them. Um, so in this little bag here, I have vet wrap, which you can get on Amazon. It doesn't stick to the fur. Um, this is what they used on Miggy's bandage on his foot over top of the other bandages. Um, so I got some vet wrap. Also has some different size gauze pads in here. I have some um, other gauze wrap. So you would put like the gauze, you would put the gauze pad onto the, say he broke another toenail. Put that on there, wrap it in this gauze wrap, and then use the vet, vet wrap over top of that. Um, there are many videos on YouTube that you can watch that shows how to wrap a uh, dog's foot in case of a broken toenail or a cut on the paw pad. Also have just a regular pair of scissors in here to cut the vet wrap, cut the gauze. So that's my little kit. I do have some tweezers um, to say something gets in their paw pad um or anywhere on them some tweezers and then i also after miggy had his toenail issue when he broke his toenail and we had to take his bandage off what a pain it was because the tape they used underneath the vet wrap stuck to his fur and it was a pain even with these little scissors and i even have some smaller than this um it was a pain um, with him wiggling around trying not to poke him. So I purchased on Amazon some bandage scissors. They're kind of angled as you can see and there's no sharp pointy edge. So it's easier to get under that bandage and cut it so you're not poking your dog. So this is a good thing to have on hand too. <laughs> I learned that after trying to take his bandage off. So that's everything I have in case of a cut broken toenail, um, something where I need the bleeding to kind of be contained and stopped before it, on the way or waiting to get to a vet. Now, if it's a severe cut, like I said, go straight to the emergency vet. So that's what this is in this little bag. I'll probably open up the scissors and put it in here eventually too, so it's all contained. Um, in this bag here, I have Benadryl. You can give your dog Benadryl. Ask your vet, because um, they'll know how much your dog weighs and they can let you know how much Benadryl your dog can have. Um, in case of bug bite, um, anything like that that they need, may need Benadryl for. So I have Benadryl in here. I also have the dosing um, instructions from my vet. They printed this off for me. My dogs can have a half of a 25 milligram tablet every eight hours. The max dose, you can also give them more than that. So if that doesn't seem to be working, they told me I could go up to 36 milligrams. So a tablet and a half uh, every eight hours. Uh, but they said to only do that for like one day. So I have those instructions here so I don't forget um, because it could be the weekend you're having some anxiety maybe of what's going on i've got the instructions right here <laughs> so i know exactly how much to give them i don't have to google it and wonder if i'm giving them the right amount so ask your vet uh, if you keep some benadryl on hand for your dog i also have in here um leftover creams like this is the leftover cream for miggy um when he was having his issue with his uh after he broke his toenail some tissue was growing on top of the wound and stuff and we had to put the steroid cream on so I kept that because there's half a container left. I have eye drops that Grant used to take. They're light sensitive so they're in this brown bag. I have other eye drops that Grant used to take because just in case that other eye gives him issues, I have some on hand uh, if this happens on a Saturday night or Sunday during uh, when the vet is closed. So I have those on hand. I have a steroid cream that I had to spray on Milo when he had a rash on his side. Um, 
He had a flare up on his skin. We don't know what it was from, so I've kept that. I have some anti-nausea pills on hand. Um, I have different pain pills, like I have some leftover gabapentin from both Mozzie and Grant that um, are still good. I still have some uh, Rovera on hand because sometimes you don't have to use the full as much as they give you. So keep it on hand um, for pain, uh, pain management if you can't get right to the vet. You have a pet and what else do I have in here? I have a couple little like medicine dispensers. Um, what is this? This is an antibiotic cream that I was having to put on um, a little bump that was bleeding on Mozzie. And I also use this on Milo along with this spray when he had that flare up on his side. Um, what else do I have? I have a tick remover. When Max had a tick on him. Oops, one just fell out. Here we go. There's two different sizes. And this got the tick out. Didn't break the head off under the skin, anything. These things work great. Um, you can get these on Amazon or at your pet store. So I have these on hand, thankfully. Have never had to use it again. <laughs> but I have one of those. Um, this is a eye lube um, gel that I had to use on Grant. Um, I have some Pepsid. You can give your dog Tums or Pepsid. Make sure you know the dosage instructions uh, for your dog for that, for your dog's weight. Uh, what else do I have? I have some of the Metronize at all uh, for diarrhea. I have some of those charcoal tabs for diarrhea. So if I have, even if I have just two pills left, like pain pills, uh, the anti-diarrhea pills, I keep them. Um, I'll always check the expiration dates, but I keep them in case of an issue on the weekend. So that's an assortment. That's my little pharmacy here. <laughs> and my, my vets always say, do you have some of this on hand still? Because <laughs> they know I keep everything just in case. There's so many issues like with Grant's diarrhea, that stuff, it's come back in his old age and it's good to have on hand if the vet is closed. So that's what's in my bags. A little bit of wound care, not serious wound care. I want to keep seeing that. If it's a bad emergency, take them straight to the emergency vet. Um, I keep some of this ivory, the original ivory soap and the Gold Bond medicated powder. Um, my stepmom told me about this for hot spots on dogs, and I've had to use it on our old girl, Ginger, who was before the schnauzers. Um, she had a hot spot, use it on her. And I think I had to use it on Mozzie had a hot spot one time. Um, and it worked wonderful. And I have a video on how to use it to clear up hot spots. So I'll um, link that in the description below. So I keep that on hand just in case. I have some um, ear cleanser that I got from my vet um, in case my dogs have an issue, an ear infection or something going on with their ear. I can use this to cleanse out the ear. Um, it has a, uh, it's anti-inflammatory and it's drying. So if there's moisture in the ear, it'll help dry it up. So have that on hand for ear issues. I just purchased some of the sterile eye wash in case they have something in their eye. And I believe there's a saline solution or something you can get to rinse out wounds. Like if they cut themselves, you guys will have to let me know in the comments below. Still need to figure that out, but you can just run there it underwater. But I guess there's something you can use to wash out wounds, so I need to get that. And then I also have on hand chlorhexidine wipes. This is an antifungal, antibacterial wipe. I heard this is good for hot spots too, so also have this on hand as well. So that is my little emergency kit that I got going on so far. If there's anything here that I don't have, I know some people said they have peroxide on hand, which I do have peroxide on hand, um, but they said they use it in case their dogs eat something that they shouldn't have. But as I've been reading, I've read that that can um, ruin the lining of their stomach and different areas if you have to give them that. So is there something else you can use besides peroxide to induce vomiting for pets? 
please let me know in the comments below. But let me know if there's something else you keep on hand in case of emergency for your pets. Um, I would love to know in the comments below. Okay, I'm going to get going. Got lots to do today. Got lots of laundry to do. I had to get a new washer. If you guys remember, my dryer broke. Well, my washer didn't break, but the bearings were going bad. So the drum was, when it would spin, it sounded like a jet airliner was taking off in my laundry room. I'd have to walk, if I was on the phone, if that thing started spinning, I would have to go to the complete opposite side of the house to be able to hear anything. You couldn't speak or talk to each other in the kitchen or even in the dining room out here without having to yell because it was so loud. So I got a new washer, <laughs> finally. Like I said, it was still working, but oh my goodness, I thought for sure it was just gonna like explode, the, lo the loudness it was making, the, the noise it was making. So now I need to do some laundry today, get that done. Um, very grateful that we it was still under warranty. I didn't think it was, and it was, thankfully. So got lots to do. Like I said, I'll hop back on if I hear from Dr. Pearson. If I don't hear from her, this will be the end of the video. All right, guys. Hope everybody had a great week, and we'll talk to you guys again next week. Bye.